class good day everybody welcome to another lesson on uh, lesson 8 this time we discuss the basic concepts and goals of communication so in this particular lesson we are going to talk about how communication is going to shape the next few steps of our discussion of course given that communication is an important part of human life in this context we are going to be tackling about communication in a broad sense as a discipline as well as professionals who practice communication and most of all uh, the different events that we are able to practice the discipline of communication. Now, the main objective of our discussion is to discuss the meaning and nature of communication as well as to describe the different goals and scope of communication. In this context, we are going to be able to understand what is communication in its essence, what is the nature of communication, and the different goals and scope of communication. Now, here is an essential question that is asked commonly when discussing this topic. Why is it important to know the goal or purpose of communication? Now, let's first define what is communication. Communication in a general context or as a discipline has been debated, right? Communication is something that has so many vast and dynamic definitions that we cannot really center in one context or one concept of the definition or defining what is communication. So, according to Fisk in 2011, communication is a social interaction through messages. Whether your messages are uh, spoken or your messages are written these are social interactions and what do we interact with or how do we interact it is through messages now the definition of communication is still a subject of debate wala gihapon tay konkreto or exact definition of what is communication hence we have a lot of definitions that are being attributed to what communication is as a discipline and as a, a, a idea or a concept. Now, communication involves transmission of signs and codes. As we can see, in formal and informal uh, ways of communicating, there are always signs and codes. Now, who determines these signs and codes? We have the ethnographics of the different words, the different symbols, the different sentence patterns, so on and so forth, as a broad and vast discussion that we are uh, engaging in our day-to-day -day experiences. Now, before I continue, if ever you hear background noises, do kindly excuse it because I am currently at home recording this lecture video. Now, let's talk about signs. As we have mentioned earlier, Communication involves transmission of signs and codes. Now, signs can be attributed to symbols, objects, or behaviors that signify meaning. Examples of this are letters, numbers, or the different uh, practices or the different behaviors that we can see that is signifying a meaning. For example, a thumb sign, which is to say like or dislike, depending on which uh, which position you are going to place it. So these are the different symbols, objects, or behaviors that are signifying meaning that gives or communicates to a particular individual through signs. Another are codes. Codes are systems that determine how signs should go together. So natay duha ka aspeto ang ginalantaw dere is signs and codes. So when talking about codes, these are now referring to systems, right, on how signs are used to go together to form a more systematic and a more concrete concept of communication. Communication. Now, there are two schools in communication studies. Number one, sees communication as the transmission of messages. That's the first school. Another, sees communication as the production and exchange of meanings. So, from transmission of messages, which we can attribute to signs, right? The different symbols, objects, and behaviors that signify meaning to attributing it to codes, which now talk about the production and exchange of meanings. Now, in the broader sense, what is communication? 
Communication has varied goals. First is to inform. This aims to give people facts and information. Commonly nowadays, since it is the election season in the Philippines, we hear and we see and we read a lot of informations that are misleading, that are being crafted out to boycott a particular individual or a particular group of individuals. Now, make sure that this communication is being regulated, being filtered, and being analyzed through an objective lens or an objective point of view. Hence, the goal of communication is being met, which is to inform, to give people facts and information. One way or ways to inform as a means of goal of communication is through mass media. Nowadays, we utilize electronic mass media or public speaking, such as this platform that we are doing, teaching. Galing lang, it is more innovated because we are doing this online. But then again, this is still using mass media or electronic mass media to generate information, to provide facts and information to a lot or to a number of individuals. Another goal of communication is to request. This is asking for something to be done or asking or requesting an ap and this is also ap applicable in conversations. Now, in doing requests, we need to remember that aside from communicating your point or communicating on sa inyong tuyo, you also need to be very specific and precise on what you want to achieve out of the request that you are asking that needs to be done. Remember that the request is something that needs to be realized, that needs to be accomplished. Now, in doing so, we need to make sure that in requesting, there is something that is acceptable as well in doing this one. The manner that you, that you give your request or ask for your request, as well as the timing that you give or ask for your request. Another goal of communication is to persuade. Convincing people to adopt change or maintain beliefs, values, and behaviors. O sikala yan, anong persuading sa convincing? Pers a convincing class is letting people say yes. Okay, yes, I agree. But persuading, on the other hand, is convincing people to adopt, to change, or to maintain your beliefs, values, and behaviors. It's a very different scope or a very different perspective because there is no action that is being done. It's either you adopt, maintain, or change a particular belief, value, or behavior. Example, let's still utilize the campaign season here in the Philippines. If you're going to say, let's vote for a particular candidate and the person that you are telling it says yes, there is still no assurance that you are going to get the vote of that particular person. But if you say that if you vote for this candidate, I will give you 500 peso, then that is now the stimulus for that person to change his decision to vote for your candidate that is being endorsed because of the reward or because of the money of 500 peso. Let's mo make it more light on the lighter side. There are Nowadays, there are campaigns of two leading presidentials, right? The pink and the red. You know who I am referring to, so I'm not going to drop names anymore. So the two leading presidentials that are represented by the colors pink and red are having different strategies in order not just to convince people of their platforms but to persuade people to transfer <coughs> and give their support to this candidate that they are supporting. The supporters of pink and red are very, very much uh, enthusiastic or optimistic in persuading people and encouraging people to listen to their uh, platforms or platforms, plataforma de gobiernos, as well as to be persuaded to vote for this particular candidate. Their my main target is those who are yet undecided. But those who are already on the other side, whether the red or the pink camp or islands, are persuading one another, right, to transfer, to make sure that you are here in this particular camp and make sure right that you are going to vote for the candidate that they are endorsing so that is persuading there is now a change of behavior all right now in persuading class this is evident in advertisements and in speeches so when we persuade we need to have strong points in order for us 
to convince people to transfer right into our point of view or to be engaged in the different ventures that we are taking interests now another goal of communication is to build relationships however if we look at it in the examples that i have used with the campaign season in the philippines building relationships is as a myth as bigfoot building relationships is something that is that has become a laughing stock for filipinos because nowadays we don't only have relationships but we have very negative implications to the re to the relationships that we have because of taking colors because of being a pink a green a, a red a blue or whatever color that it is that we see right now the goal of communication in that aspect is not being respected and is not being met therefore there are no relationships that are built because when we talk about building relationships as a goal of communication, the main point here is to foster a common understanding and a common respect to the differences, to the diversity of every single individual that lives in one particular plateau. Now, in building relationships, we need to remember that communication develops friendships, relationships, and partnerships. It could be civil it could be personal or it could be professional. But then again, the common or the main point of building a relationship or building relationships as a goal of communication is to develop friendship, relationships, and partnerships in order for us to have a progressive take on how we are going to deal with the everyday circumstances that come before us, right? As individuals and as a collective member of society. Now, talking about that, Let's now try to check our comprehension of our discussion so far. Why is communication important to members of the society? And I'm still going to wrap your heads with the examples of the campaign season in the Philippines because a month from now, or almost a month, roughly a month from now, five weeks from now, we are going to be electing new leaders in the national and local government units in the country. Now, why is communication important to members of the society? Let us all remember that after May 9, 2022, or after June 30, when these officials have formally been inaugurated and took, o took oath of their respective offices upon which they are going to be elected, elected to, we do not need to see pink, red, green, blue, or whatsoever. Hence, we need to see the color of the Philippine flag reflected in each one of us because then again we are filipinos so here's a nugget of wisdom that i'm going to give to you my point of view in choosing my leaders is something that is common or is something that is similar to what mj said in spider-man um spider-man no way home i think that was no way home the the, the recent spider-man movie where mj said or zendaya said that uh why why expect something when you're going to be disappointed the point sa yang on is uh, expect disappointment so that you would you wouldn't be disappointed similar to that idea here's my take on philippine elections all of these politicians gunning for the different positions in the government are being thrown issues of corruption thrown issues of incompetence thrown issues of um, deception and uh, st brewing fake news, right? To deceive people. My take is very simple. If all of these candidates are liars, robbers, corrupt officials, incompetent people, then the, the need to elect a particular government official is still very essential. It's just that we need to be educated on our rights and on the different uh, provisions of our constitution in order for us to be given the right amount of teeth in implementing the law. And I'm not promoting any particular candidate in the senatorial slate. I'm just saying that we do not need to expect disappointment because we need to expect pro uh, progress and we need to expect results from these elected officials. Therefore, we must be educated in our rights and the constitutional provisions of the laws of the Philippines in order for us to communicate with these officials if they are screwing their job. Simply say, Mr. Mayor, Mr. President, 
you're fucking up. So therefore, they get to know that the society at large or the country at large is largely or hugely involved and proactive in the different services that they offer as elected government officials. Take note that I am not taking any side of a political party in this discussion. I am just simply stating how we can use communication to become better and proactive members of society. Now, class, let us talk about the different scope of communication. First, we have intrapersonal communication. Intrapersonal is talking about one's self. These are the thoughts that go through our mind that is being channeled, whether through your vlogging or through your uh, jotting down in your diaries or journals. They, these are thoughts about one's self. Imuhang kaugaligon. Right? So, pag may yung intrapersonal sa imong kaibuturan ng iyong isip at damdamin. Now, there is also another part of, or another uh, const, uh, tawag na, tawag ani, another opposite of intrapersonal communication, and that is interpersonal communication. These are conversations with close friends and families. So, when we talk about interpersonal you do not need to keep your thoughts about one's self to yourself. Hence, you can start conversations with close friends and families. If the comfort is there with these people, then you can always give or you can always make the conversations light but meaningful through the context that you are going to have or converse with them with. Another is organizational communication. This is communication with informal and organizational settings. So, aduna na tayo mga nagkaraiya nga mga scope of communication. This also means that there are also different and varying settings and manner of communicating. One of which is organizational communication. So, if interpersonal and intrapersonal communication is more of how we socialize with people in the normal way or in the a customary way according to our preferences, how you reflect on oneself or how you converse with close families and friends, organizational communication naman follows a certain format because this adheres to a formal, formal and organizational setting. Meaning to say, when you are in an organization, you need to make sure that you are able right, to invest and immerse yourself in the objectives of that discussion because you are not there to enjoy a cup of coffee per se. You are there to make sure that the goals and objectives of the organization is going to be met, is going to be discussed and agreed upon in order for you to realize a particular goal that you have in mind. So that is organizational communication. Another is public speaking. Public speaking is communication to a large audience. Let's say 10, 15, 20, to 50, to 100, to 150, all the way to 10,000 people. That is considered public speaking. If you are in a group of five, then that is considered your interpersonal way of communicating. But if you are going to do public speaking, there is at least or at most a group of individuals nga lampas siguro 10 kana ma consider na nato siya nga public speaking when you are in a class of 7 when you are in a class of 10 that's still considered public speaking but in a more innovative manner kay gamay lang man but if you're in a class of 20 and up then that is considered a large audience that you are going to communicate a particular topic or a particular idea which now comes the challenge because you are not able to monitor if every single participant or every single member of the audience crowd is able to grasp, right, to understand fully what you are discussing. So it is important that your goals and your presentation in how you communicate is going to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bounded. Okay, para you are able to capture the attention, the interest, and let the readers or let your listeners comprehend what you are talking about in a large crowd, right? This is something evident if we go back to biblical times. Christ 
talked not only to the 12 disciples, but to a crowd of thousands, hundreds and thousands of people that would listen right, to his parables and to his teachings. Imagine if talking to a particular... Think about this for an example. Picture out in your minds. Kana makita na to karon nga mga rally of political parties. Ingon anak kadaghan ang crowd. Kulang magani na usahay ang mga amplifiers o mga microphone in order for them to be heard and in order for their message to come across. Think about how Christ or what Christ went to when he gave his lectures, his teachings, and the stories through his parables. to a large number of individuals that were able to follow him, that were able to worship and to go by his ways. So that's how important public speaking is because you can get across your message or your yeah, your message or your intended content to a large number of individuals. Mona, it is also very important that you speak, that you learn how to speak in a large audience. Another is mass media. Now, similar to public speaking, mass media is talking about hundreds of thousands of people that you, that you cannot keep or contain in one particular venue. So that's why we have the usage of television, radio. We also have the usage nowadays, we have the usage of social media platforms, right? That constitute to the different avenues that we get to communicate to a large number or to the public in general, Okay. Now, in this particular part of the lesson, I want you to jot down which among the different scopes of communication is best uh, uh, is best doable to you. Asa dito ang mas kaya ni mong himuon? Either intrapersonal, interpersonal, or you're able to do organizational communication. Mas ganahan ka ng structured and formal ng mga discussions. Or, Are you able to do public speaking? You're comfortable talking to a lot of people or you're given the opportunity to record yourself through a video blog and then you talk. You talk and you talk and then you let the mass, anybody that can see, that can view your videos, enjoy what you are, do what you are doing or what you are saying in your particular video. Which one is it? Intrapersonal, interpersonal, organizational communication, public speaking, or mass media, which is more comfortable and doable for you. I want you to jot it down, and I, I will be asking for it in the group chat on Messenger. Okay? Now, let's try to wrap up our discussion with this particular points that we need to ponder upon having our lesson wrapped for today. First, Communication is a process by which information is exchanged between and among individuals through a common system of symbols, signs, or behaviors. Take note that this is a process, right? Communication is a process wherein information is exchanged. Information is also produced through a common system of symbols, signs, or behavior. The main goals and purposes of communication are to inform, request, persuade, and build relationships. Now, another, communication takes place in the context of intrapersonal, interpersonal, organizational, public speaking, and mass media interactions. Now, here's a very interesting challenge for all of you. How can the goal and purpose of communication affect the content of the message. Take note that it is a very important part of communication, the how and the why of the aspect of communication. So here's a question, here's a challenge. How can the goal and purpose of communication affect the content of the message? Now, if you find the discussion quite challenging, you may always message me for clarifications. But if you do, Go and answer your modules and manage your time wisely. Thank you for watching this lecture video. See you on the next lessons that we are going to discuss.